talk about the length of a polar curve. In order to do that though, we're going to take one quick reminder of something you've learned earlier, and it's just about the easiest thing you've ever learned. The arc length of a plane circle. If you ever wanted to know how long the distance was around a circle, we call this arc length, and for reasons I can't begin to understand, we somehow gave that the name S. All you need to know is the radius of the circle. Remember the radius is going to be the same distance to both of those points on the arc. So we need to know this radius. And we need to know the angle in here. We call this the central angle of the arc. And the simple formula is S is just the product of the two, R times theta. So in the example here, if the radius is 8 centimeters and the central angle is half a radian, all that means is you multiply 8 times 1 half, and that arc length is 4 centimeters. But that formula S equals R theta is going to be helpful for us in just a minute. So now on to the main topic of the day, which is the arc length of a polar curve. A reminder that the idea of a polar curve is uh, a curve whose coordinates are written not as x, y, but every point on this curve. So I'm going to draw a polar curve here. There's nothing special about this curve. We'll call that r of theta. But every point on this curve is defined by the radius at that point, meaning the distance from that point to the curve, to the pole, we call that r, we can label it r, and the angle rotated from the sort of the zero degree angle, the positive x-axis, we call this angle theta. So this point r comma theta is defined by those two pieces. Now, if we were to move along a little bit farther, so rotate our um, angle a little bit farther, we'll give that a little bit extra, we'll give that a name, we'll call that d theta, a little bit more theta, a little change in theta, and now the radius at that point, a little bit bigger than I wanted to. So this point now would have an angle. The angle at this point is theta plus d theta. That's the total angle here. And to figure out the radius at that point, we're going to draw, get a little bit of help from a circle. circle that passes through call that good enough. The circle that with the center on the origin that passes through the point r theta, which means that to this point right here, this length is also r. And so what we're going to do is call this extra little bit of radius here, we'll call that dr. The slight change in radius between when theta is theta when the angle is theta and when the angle is theta plus d theta. So this radius is r plus dr. What I'm going to do is color that a different color. So this is r plus, that is just dr. The arc length from one point to the other, the arc length from here around the polar curve to here. Now imagine that this was a small enough arc length so that it was essentially straight. Which remember we're going infinitely small so we can kind of think of that as a straight line. That straight line has a name too. It is dl because it is the tiny little incremental change in arc length. An arc length we call last lesson we call that l. 
And so what we need now is a way to refer to the what's going to end up being the third piece of a right triangle right here. Well, the way we're going to figure out what that is, and this is kind of clever of us, is we're going to remember that from this point right here to this point right here, we pass along a circle. So that length is going to be the same as the arc length of an arc defined by a radius of r and a central angle of d theta. And we learned in the last slide that arc length of a circle is equal to r times theta. So in this case, that radius, we're just calling it r. And the angle, the central angle there, is d theta. So the length of that green line is r d theta. And this is a right triangle um, because we used, a, this is really, a green line is really a tangent line, and tangents are um, perpendicular. So that's a right angle, which means since it's a right triangle, we can write a relationship between the three sides that the square of the hypotenuse of that little right triangle is equal to the square of one leg, dr squared, plus the square of the other leg, r d theta squared. And hopefully this is starting to look familiar to you because this is exactly what we did for the other two types of arc length also. We get the dl by itself. And then in the last examples that we've seen with other kinds of arc length, we factored out the dx squared. We factored out the dt squared when the independent variable was t. Now the independent variable in our polar curve is theta. So we're going to factor out a d theta squared from inside that radical. So I'm going to factor out d theta squared which will leave me with, well, try factor a d theta squared out of a dr squared. You're left with dr squared over d theta squared. But if you factor a d theta squared out of the r d theta squared, you're left with r squared. And just like in the examples from yesterday, from our last class, we can take the perfect square, the square root of the perfect square, and pull that d theta squared out. And what we're left with is dr d theta squared which you can certainly leave it as dr d theta squared, but a reminder that another name for that is r prime of theta squared plus r squared times d theta. And as we saw many times when we were talking about area and volume um, earlier in the year, if we have the measurement of a tiny little increment, and we want to turn that into the total, the measurement of the total, total length, if we want to go from dl to full l, we just need to add up all the dls. The infinite number of dls, well, there's a word for that, that is integrate. So we are going to integrate from start to finish, and we'll talk more about that a little bit later, the square root of r squared of theta squared plus r squared with respect to theta. And that is the formula for arc length of a polar curve.